All right, we are here with uh, Topper Carew, and it's uh, June 7th, year 2013. Topper, when did you first come into WGBH's extended family? I uh, first came in in 1973, September. September of 1973. And what were you doing? Um, I was uh, asked to come on board to produce Say Brother. And I must tell you that that was easy, easily one of the uh, most creative spans of my media career. Now, what's so interesting about that? Yeah, what? I never really produced television before. And I'd been making films. And I had uh, produced concerts. And the first three or four months in that job uh, were like uh, being in a... Uh, foreign country but it was so exciting and so exhilarating and I had so much support that uh, you know I managed to get get through um, but it was a wonderful time who know? was who was on your staff at that time who were you, who were you working with? I had uh, I had Barbara Barrow oh yeah I had Vicki Jones I hired Dighton Spooner oh, yeah. um, I had Connie Connie White. Connie White as the director. Uh, when I would go out in the field to shoot pieces, I had Henry Johnson, right. I had Tony Lark as an editor, yeah. I had Huntley Nicholas as a sound person, um, and we would just make these incredible one-hour shows on a weekly basis where we could do just about anything. Um, so we touched on you know, political subject matter, cultural subject matter, historical subject matter, and that was just easily one of the most vibrant times of my life. And I have to tell you that this man had some of the greatest hats I've ever seen worn at WGBH. And he guarantees me that he still has some. I love hats. <laughs> I've, 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 I've had hats since I was a kid. In fact, when I was 14 years old, uh, I had my first custom-made <laughs> fedora. And it, by the way, Fred, it was a tradition in my neighborhood where I grew up in Roxbury and Dorchester that when you were 14 yeah. everybody went and had a hat, hat made, made at a place downtown called really? Hand the Hatter. I'll be damned. And so that was my first first real hat. So why did you leave WGBH? I left uh, WGBH because uh, um, I had done Say Brother mm -hmm. and then we did Say Brother National Edition and then uh, we did uh, Rebop 1 and, oh, yeah. and Rebop 2. Oh yeah. And I got the calling to do comedy. There you go. I wanted to do comedy because my interest in television and film was it as a medium to impact consciousness and to advance, you know, political ideas. And, and you thought you could do it best through comedy. And I felt I could do it best through comedy. And I had watched the stunning success of Norman Lear. Oh, yeah. And, you know, all in the family was like the benchmark for me oh, at that yeah. time because he was a show right. about bigotry right. you know that was being packaged in a way that lots of people, people. lots of people would tune in to see yeah. that show yeah. and get those lessons so that's what I wanted to do so I got I got to tell you it was a gutsy move um, going to a town that you really didn't know. Which you, town is that? Los Angeles. Woo! Where Hollywood. You, where you really didn't know a lot of people, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and trying to plant your feet on the ground. So it was an interesting experience. Yeah. So what did you do while you were in Hollywood? So um, I started a company called Rainbow, which was a nonprofit company, and we began to raise money, and we did a first series called The Righteous Apples, and we did a series called The Rainbow Movies of the Week. And then we did a series called Tales in a Golden Groove. That was all in the nonprofit sector. And then uh, I got to do a movie called DC Cab. And then I got to do a series for ABC called Home Room. Then I got to do a series for Universal called Bustin' Loose. And then I finally got to do a series called Martin, yeah. which uh, was the golden ring for me. It's right. a series that went to syndication yeah. and, and a number of polls. It has been uh, thought to be one of the two most popular black television series of all time, the other being The Cosby Show. And this thing has been going since 1992. It's just absolutely crazy. Great pension. <laughs> well, you know, I got to tell you. You didn't get those residuals? Oh, no, you worked no, for Disney. No, 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 I, 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 got, I, got, my, I got mine. Uh, but it was, it's so funny that 
those things were never the goal. The yeah, goal right. was always just to do interesting yeah. and challenging work. And I am lucky that uh, these other things fell into place. my way yeah. and fell my plate. And it, it, they just came my way. But that wasn't the expectation. I was just trying to do good and interesting work because I've always been curious and always being driven by creativity. Uh, and, and so I just got lucky. Uh, you just heard why so many of WGBH types are here today because just what he said. It wasn't about the money. It, it, was, a, it was about the curiosity right. and a commitment to being creative. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was about making and doing. Yeah. And you know, once a person gets in touch with that creative drive and the, the, uh, the, that, the learning process and the stimulation that comes from being creative and, and taking something from an idea stage right. all the way through to the end, yeah. It's like it's like it's it's it becomes a habit, and that's why I say that say brother in the, that first season of say brother for me was mo one of the most interesting and vital times of my life because I was in a sandbox, you know, with a bunch of tools <laughs> and a little bunch a, a little bit of money. Yeah, right, not much. You know, constantly trying to figure yeah. out how to make a show that would have some impact and would resonate with people, you know, it's, it's so that people would either feel good about it or feel good about themselves or learn something, you know, and it was just an unbelievable time of life. And I can't tell you that there have been many places since like that, or I can't tell you that there are many places like that now today, maybe in the tech universe. Maybe. You know, because I hear all these stories about what Google is like and what it's like to work there. but. This was, and I was reflecting on this uh, the other day when I knew I was going to come to the reunion, and I flashed back on the 60s and my time here in the 70s and how the, the hallways were alive. That's right. Right? We were doing TV shows every day, maybe oh, two or three a day. Oh, man. And just, and, and with, and putting them together with bubble gum. Yeah, right. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So great time. And you are now at? I'm now at the MIT Media Lab, and the great news is that it kind of resembles the early days of WGBH, you know, where they let you make mistakes, and they encourage you to make and do, and they encourage innovation, and they encourage invention, and they encourage creative learning. So I'm blessed to be there. You're very blessed. Thank you, Topper Carew. Yes.